Ah, good afternoon. So today I am going to take uh, unit four, uh, that is uh, financial accounting and uh, financial ratio analysis. In the previous unit, I told about uh, interest, uh, interest factors, and uh, how to calculate uh, various uh, EMIs using various interest formula and all. And also told about uh, uh, calculating. Uh, uh, depreciation uh, and the methods of calculating depreciation and also the components of various cost estimation of estimation and costing also yeah this will change middle on just okay oh, good oh, good okay good hmm. point right okay good thank you thank you Okay, uh, these things I already told about uh, in the previous class. So now in this uh, unit, I'm going to focus on financial accounting uh, as well as uh, ratio analysis. So I will ask you one question here. I think, uh, of course, all of you have gone to bank. So we are going, going, we are going for banks. We are going for banks. Maybe with uh, two purposes. One, either to deposit or to withdrawal. Okay, there are two basic purposes of anybody to go to bank. Either to deposit or to withdrawal. So, in banking terms, they call it as debit and credit. Just if you want, you can see the passbook and all. You can see that how much amount has been credited by the customer and how much money has been debited. So they say in terms of debit and credit in the banking terms. So here, in fact, I want to highlight some of the basics of accounting terms so that, so after knowing the theory, theory the background, you can solve the problems. I can also prepare a, a profit loss balance sheet and also can find out various ratios okay, that, has, uh, that you can do it. So I'm going to give some basic idea about uh, the, the terms of financial management. So there are two accounting systems are there. In it. One is uh, financial accounting. Second is a management accounting. So financial accounting, that is uh, reporting the financial information to investors. So there are so many people who are going to invest in the organization. Okay, that is uh, also called as stakeholders. Okay, that is um, the stock uh, the shareholders are, you can say, the people who purchase uh, bonds or debentures. Okay, so those people are called as uh, the investors. So, financial accounting, basically, that is uh, reporting the financial information for the, all these uh, stakeholders. This is called as uh, financial accounting. Next, the management accounting, that is basically, caters the needs of the internal use. Management also wants, okay, how much... What is the income? What are the expenses? Okay, how much is basically, basically to calculate or to prepare budget and all. So they want this information. So management account, accounting basically catering needs of the internal users, nothing but the management. So one more term you should know that's about in this unit that is a balance sheet. That is a statement of financial position. It indicates the financial condition at a particular moment of time. Normally, you would have seen that the balance sheet as on 31st March 2020 or 31st uh, 12 2019, something. Okay, that is actually so balance sheet basically indicating the statement of financial position and indicating the financial condition at a particular moment of time or during some period. Okay, that is called as the balance sheet. Next year, some more terms here. Normally, when you we, when you talk about an organization, normally they go and say, so, this much of assets we have, 
at the library today, we have this list. Normally, you should know about what do you mean by assets, what do you mean by liabilities. But what do you mean by assets? So, yes, assets basically, they are the economic resources, valuable position owned by a firm. Okay, they are basically the economical resources. Measurable in monetary terms. Remember, anything in the organization, okay, whether it's going to be equipment or a material or a raw material or uh, anything in the organization, that should be converted into monetary terms. So they are called as uh, assets. That we can say economic resources, valuable position owned by a firm, measurable using uh, monetary terms. For example, cash receivables, stock, that is how much inventory they have on hand, and the land, that is the land they have going to have for the organization to build on our land, buildings, the plant, equipments, raw materials, finished goods, and the WIP, that is work in progress, all these are the assets. They can be converted into monetary terms. It means they can sell it off and they get money done. Nothing but you can sell it. They can be converted into monetary terms. And also they can measure because this much of worth of assets we have, this much of worth of plants we have, this much of worth of inventory on hand we have, this much of money we are expecting from the outsiders. So cash receivables. So all these things called as the assets. So there are various types of assets are there. So uh, I just, just am going to uh, brief here only a uh, few assets here that is, uh, can be classified as uh, current assets, uh, investments, uh, fixed assets, and uh, deferred charges. So they are called as uh, the current assets. So I'm going to deal in detail while solving problems. Next, of course, uh, liabilities. I told you in the beginning, that is normally in the organization, they talk about uh, two things. That is, one is uh, assets and uh, liabilities. I told that uh, assets are the economic resources convertible or measurable in terms of money values. So here, what do you mean liabilities? Liabilities are the debts payable in future by the firm to its creditors. Remember, so they are the payable amounts in future by the firm to the creditors. Means this is the liability we have. This is the money we have to pay to the creditors. Okay, that's called as a liability. They represent economic obligation. It's the obligation they have. They have to pay this much. They have to transfer this much. They have to extend this much. Okay, that is called the, the obligation the organization has got. They represent the economic obligation to pay cash or provide goods or services in turn for some future period. That is called as the liability. Generally, liabilities are created by borrowing money or purchasing goods or services on credit. When they are going to buy anything, any goods or a plant or equipment or anything on credit, they are called liability because they have to pay in future. It is called as the liabilities. Next example here, what are the examples? That is the creditors, bills payable later, wages payable to the laborers, salary for the employees, interest payable okay, for the amount they have taken, a loan amount they have taken, interest payable, and taxes payable. Of course, at the end of the day, they are supposed to pay tax, they are called as GST, they are supposed to pay taxes. Bonds, okay, the so many people are going to purchase bonds for investment transaction as okay, that is uh, shareholders, debentures, somebody might invested as a debenture bond, and the bank loans, and loans from financial institutions, other, other institutions like uh, uh, state financial care, SFC, RIC, IC, and uh, small scale industry, because you don't all, okay, all these things are also going to provide loans. So they're going to supposed to pay loan for this, so all they're called as uh, the liabilities. So there are two types of liabilities, one is uh, Current liability means as on today, within the financial they are supposed to be ready is uh, current liabilities uh, and second is uh, long term liabilities means they have got some time to pay in future. There are two types of liabilities, one is uh, current one, second is uh, long term liabilities. Next here, so just I am going to talk about uh, is, uh, the financial analysis. What do you mean by financial statement analysis? Okay, that is uh, the assessment of the firm's past present and future financial conditions. Okay, what are the financial conditions in the previous? Okay, how the firm was did in the previous years? What actually now presently doing? What is the future condition of the organization? So, indicating the past, present and future financial conditions. It is basically to, to find firm's financial strength and weaknesses. So by understanding the First, by knowing the, or by analyzing the first statement, you come to know that uh, what is the strength of the organization and what is the uh, weakness of the organization. There are so many uh, 
uh, tools are there for analyzing the final statement. Of course, one is uh, preparing the final statement and the comparison of uh, financial ratios to past and with respect to industry, with respect to the sectors, various sectors, with respect to all firms. So they can um, use. These are the three primary tools used for analyzing the final statement of the organization. Next year, okay, just uh, before solving some problems, understand some of the uh, basic terms uh, used in uh, uh, financial statement analysis. Okay, one is of course that is uh, uh, profit and uh, loss account. Okay, also called uh, simply called as uh, uh, P and L account. Okay, profit loss account. So a firm's financial strength is measured by its earning capacity. Normally, when you say when you say that uh, the organization is doing better, they are prospect. Their process is too good, they have got too much of prosperity, and they are doing too well, they are doing well. When we say, when we say that a firm financial strength is measured by earning capacity, how much money they could be able to earn back, that is what you can say, return on investment, or also called sometimes payback period, how, how many days or years or months they take to money back. The earning capacity and the potential of a firm are reflected by P&L account. So, the earning capacity of the organization and also the potential of a firm means whether they could be able to get that money back or they could be able to return the uh, investment and all. Those things are referred in the uh, profit loss account. It's a scoreboard, remember. So, sometimes it's called as, uh, also going to be called something called as, scoreboard is called because everything is shown in the numerical values, numerical terms, this much of worth of profit in terms of rupees or any monetary values, dollars or something like that, okay. So, that is uh, so basically showing the, all the values in terms of numerical values, okay, in terms of numbers. That's why you can say it's a scoreboard during a period of time. I told that normally we're going to calculate as on, okay, as on 31st March, because normally the financial year starts from 1st April to next to 31st of the March. It's called as a financial year, okay. Uh, so it's a score, scoreboard during a period of time. Uh, P&L account gives a summary of revenues, expenses, and net loss and the profit of the firm. Okay, so it's very important. So normally they're going to calculate how much is revenue expected from this sale of goods, or in terms of uh, sell, sell of goods, or sometimes they're going to uh, dispose the old machinery and all. Okay, also called as I think um, scrap value, resale value. I told you in the chapter, previous chapter studies, so in the chapter like uh, depreciation or in the comparison of present worth, I told you these things, resale value and all. Okay, so sometimes they are going to uh, get expense, they get income, uh, also called as revenues, okay, nothing but income, okay, uh, income, and also they have to calculate the revenues, okay, and uh, net loss and the profit of firm. Okay, so what do you mean a revenue? Also called as uh, income, okay, normally in account terms they are called, called as uh, revenues, okay, revenue. Revenues are the amounts which the customers pay to a firm for providing them goods and services. Okay, so revenue, okay, revenue. Income, how they going to get income? How they going to get income for organization? That is, they're going to pay for a firm for providing them. So when they're going to sell the goods, when they're going to provide services, in turn, they're going to get some money. Nothing but revenue, okay, that is money in, okay, that's what the revenue, nothing but income, okay, said. So there are two types of revenues normally. One is uh, operating revenues. They are arising from main operations or a business. Okay, that is direct sale of product. They're going to get the operating revenues. Okay, by direct sale of goods or a final product. Next, non-operating revenues. So that is called as uh, also called as they are, they are basically uh, indirect or incidental uh, uh, revenue revenues. You know, suppose sometimes. Uh, government going to announce that uh, these MSMEs are going to get so much of uh, uh, benefit in terms of subsidies. Subsidies are non-operating revenues. Don't know whether they are going to get or not. Sometimes government is going to weigh off the interest. So that much of money they could be able to save nothing but then. So they are called as, uh, <coughs> as non-operating expense uh, revenues. Indirectly they are going to get for the organization. Okay? Or also sometimes incidental, incidental they are going to get the uh, revenue. So there are two revenues, one is the operating, second is the non-operating revenues. Of course, uh, example I have given here, it is an example for non-revenue. 
that is a sale of old equipment that is a, okay uh, sale of old equipment okay scrap or carry sale value the scrap and uh, dividend okay sendra going to get a dividend for the money invested and all interest or income from temporary investment sometimes so the amount made for uh, one year as a fixed deposit and all or made invested somewhere so suddenly they going to get some exam income and all okay so they are uh, uh, called as uh, the temporary so they are called as non operating revenues and next after revenue that is uh, expenses okay revenues and expenses okay that is expenditures also under called as expenditures nothing but expenses so what is expenses the cost of earning revenue sorry revenue that is if you want to earn profit if you want to uh, you want income or if you want uh, revenue for the organization profit income or revenue anything okay of course you have to invest some cost the thing comes free okay so cost by selling the goods by manufacturing goods okay by by manufacturing product you're going to get profit so basically it's nothing but the cost of earning revenue they occur when assets are consumed or liabilities are increased to provide revenue remember here okay remember here two things so when they going to get expenses one is when they occur and the assets are consumed okay assets have been consumed no money has come okay they become expenses assets consumed now or liabilities are increased okay they are going to supposed to pay in future lots of liabilities are there for coming years and all so they are to produce increased or to produce revenue so they are called as <coughs> expenses next two types of pnl account that is a profit and loss account so pnl account reveals information about revenues expenses and the income or loss of the firm remember okay that is a, i told you it is a profit revenue and income and all synonymous terms but thing is even though that is a, the revenues and income loss expenses are uh, normally in the uh, accounting terms they are going to treat differently because normally what happens here in engineering terms we go with only either profit or loss are going to say with expenses or income something like we say just like i told in bank we say that we are going to deposit and we are going to withdraw something these two things we say no so but uh, banking terms they say that debit or credit but here similar way in the accounting uh, terms they are going to treat these terms are different terms that's why pnl account reveals information about revenues expenses and the income or loss of the firm the heading includes normally when they going to prepare a pnl account we going to provide the heading okay that is pnl account for the companies voltas company or lg company we say like that so that is the heading includes the name of the firm type of statement and the period of time to which the statement relates we are going to write three things here basically that is one is the name of the firm that is i told you name of the firm and next the type of statement we are going to prepare a, a profit and loss account are you going to prepare balance sheet because you are right what exactly you are showing okay that is and also the period of time to which the statement is relates that is whether you are going to do for this financial year or a previous year okay those things should be shown so these things are very essentially uh, in the uh, profit loss account so here uh, of course uh, these things are going to be depicted in the pnl account that is uh, the manufacturing expenses and general administrative expenses i told you i think uh, in unit number 3 i talked about uh, that is uh, uh, all the components of cost that is uh, the prime cost uh, fixed cost manufacturing cost production cost factory cost okay the selling price profit those things i told okay so there are so many uh, components of manufacturing cost are there it is are there and also there are so many uh, administrative expenses also there okay that is uh, the rent for building taxes payable salary for the employees okay electricity fees uh, and uh, those things are there okay so they are all called rather the expenses i told you already in the previous unit i am not covering here but only thing these are also included in the expenses <coughs> next here profit okay 
the concept of profit. Okay, just like um, you know, asking somebody so, uh, what is the salary or a package offered by uh, some company. Uh, they say they offered 12 lakhs per annum. They say it. So it doesn't mean that uh, they're going to pay one lakh salary for for a salary per month. It's going to be called as cost to company. C to C. I think you know the cost to company. It is. Uh, it involves all the uh, other uh, uh, expenses involved in that. So maybe at the end he may going to get uh, a gross salary of a net net salary of say around 90 or 900 rupees or 800 rupees by deducting all the expenses incurred for a person by a company. Okay. So so here that's why we're talking about here the gross profit and uh, profit before tax, before uh, depreciation, before interest, before taxes, and uh, profit after depreciation, profit after in, uh, interest, profit after taxes. So it's very important to remember, when you're going to prepare a p and account, you should know whether you're going to calculate the profit as a gross profit, or you're going to calculate it before depreciation or interest or taxes, or calculate after. So these are the things they're going to highlight so these terms, okay, that is about, uh, first of all, you see, what do you mean by gross profit, uh, so GP? It's a difference between sales and uh, cost of goods sold, including the manufacturing costs. Okay, the difference between sales, how much worth of sales, okay, worth of sales, so maybe one lakh worth of, uh, some, okay, a sales price, okay, sales price, okay, by taking into account total sales volume, multiply by the rate of product, you know it, how to calculate the selling price. So, it's the difference between sales and the cost of goods sold, cost, how much the expense involved by selling the goods, that is, uh, sales commission, distribution cost, administrative expenses, and uh, those things are there, of course, you can't directly straight away uh, take a product and uh, give it to uh, any organ, any, uh, you're not going to directly sell it, okay, so, so, it involves a lot of expense involved also to, man, to sell it. So basically, this gross profit, the difference between the sales and the cost of goods sold, including the manufacturing costs. So one more thing, normally, you can see in the accounting term you're going to use PBDIT. Okay, PBDIT. It is a, a profit before depreciation, interest, and taxes. Okay, of course, it's also sometimes uh, similar to GP because. Uh, uh, GP, gross profit loss, includes all these things, that is, um, uh, depreciation, interest and all. So, PBIT, it is equal to revenue, total revenue, minus all the operating expenses, including depreciation, interest and taxes. That's what called as a PBDIT, that is, a profit before depreciation, before calculating depreciation. Of course, you know, normally, uh, any machinery or equipment or tools or a plant or a building, Anything they have to be depreciated because so at the end of the economic life, you know, I already told about uh, the asset life, the economic life, okay, those things, accounting life, and I told you in the uh, previous unit and all, okay. So, uh, see, remember here, so when they're going to uh, calculate the profit, uh, they have to take into account the depreciation of the plant, okay, maybe at the end of every year they have to deduct some amount, this is the depreciation, maybe 10% and all. And depreciation for the uh, machineries, okay, so at the end of the economic life of the machinery, it has to be replaced, okay, because uh, the, uh, you can't use the machine for so long time, okay, each, it has some life is accounting, the economic life are there for each and everyone. So, the PD, PBDIT, that is, uh, uh, profit before different tax, takes into account uh, uh, depreciation and interest and also the taxes. PBDIT is equal to revenue minus all operating expenses, including the depreciation, interest and the Taxes. Next, one more thing that is called as OP, that is operating profit. Remember GP and OP. That is GP basically, it is a gross profit before calculating the depreciation, interest and taxes. It is a OP, that is a operating profit. It is actual profit, it is a net profit. It is a PBIT before interest and taxes. Also sometimes called as EBIT. That is, uh, earning before interest and taxes given by, see, OP is equal to GP minus all the expenses incurred, operating expenses, minus the depreciation. Okay, that is, uh, PBT, 
ओके गिवन बाय पीबीआईटी माइनस इंटरेस्ट वन मोर थिंग आल्सो कंडाइज अ पैट दैट इज टेकन ओनली टैक्स दिस प्रॉफिट आफ्टर टैक्स बिफोर टैक्स आफ्टर टैक्स पीबीटी एंड पीएटी दैट इज गिवन बाय पीबीटी माइनस टैक्स दैट इज सबट्रैक्टिंग ऑल द टैक्स इन्वॉल्वड ओके लाइक जीएसटी एंड ऑल ओके दे गोइंग टू कैलकुलेट प्रॉफिट आफ्टर टैक्स ओके दैट इज पीएटी Next, what are the functions of uh, profit loss and account? Okay, after knowing that uh, uh, profit uh, revenues, expenses, profit uh, before tax, profit after tax. Okay, uh, you knowing about um, when they are going to calculate the uh, depreciation, interest, and revenue and all. So now, what are the function of the uh, profit and loss account? One, of course, it accumulates economic data. Economic data. Okay, it is uh, the revenues and expenses. in accordance with the account paid period okay for any particular period that is going to show the exact data about the revenues and expenses that is is going to called as documents the economic data okay economic data that is the revenues and expenses so here remember here i told about net profit net profit is equals to revenue minus expenses for the revenue the organization has got subtracting all the expenses okay that is the net profit next here one more thing second function of uh, uh, p and account that is uh, it measures the net profit by matching revenue and expenses okay i think uh, for solving problems in um, by preparing balance sheet and all i will tell you how exactly you are going to match the revenues and uh, expenses and all okay i will tell you later for solving problems so the second function of pnr account is it is matching the revenue and expenses and the third it communicates the information financial information to all the stakeholders remember there are many people okay i told you already that is the shareholders the people who purchase bonds the people who purchase debentures the bank people and other financial institutions they provided the loan for the organization and of course the public and the customers and the suppliers manufacturers distributors and the management when are even workers all are the stakeholders of the organization so everybody wants to know the organization financial law okay capacity of the organization okay strength of the organization that's why so basically p and l account that communicate the fresh information about to all the stakeholders that is the capability of the organization in terms of Financial capacity. Okay, those things are the functions of P and L and account. Next, how to prepare now? Okay, after knowing functions, then we have to prepare P and L and account. Okay, that is a profit loss account. Okay, that is a first step. That is initially the gross profit and gross loss as obtained from trading account is transferred to P and L account. So there is something called as the trading account. All the gross profit, gross loss. Remember, gross profit, gross loss. Okay, including our depreciation, our interest, our taxes, everything are shown in shown in the trading account. Those things are transferred into P L and account. Next, the gross profit and incomes are entered on credit side. Remember, I told in the banking terms, they going to use that is a credit and debit. These two terms. Okay, they are the banking terms. So remember here. So there are going to be two sides uh, in a PL and account. One is uh, the credit side. Second is uh, the debit side. So in the credit side, they are going to show the gross profit and incomes entered in the credit side, and the gross loss and the expenses are entered on debit side. Okay, so they are going to show. So we'll solve them. We'll understand it. How they are going to enter these two separately? That is uh, in the credit side and the debit side Yeah, uh, I will take some problems now. So, at um, 
you can understand how to, you'll understand how to calculate uh, all these numbers. I told you, you know, how to enter the values in the credit and debit side. So I'm going to solve some problems here.
yeah, these are textbooks you are supposed to refer for uh, this unit, uh, elements of management accounting by IM Pandey. So I prepared uh, these PPTs based upon some of the uh, slide shares uh, downloaded from Google and all. And also I referred the artist textbook for preparing these PPTs. And of course for anything extra points required, you can refer uh, the textbook by IM Pandey. It is uh, the elements of financial benefit management accounting by IM Pandey. The best, best book. You can refer any edition. There is no restriction of which edition is supposed to use. You can use any edition of IM Pandey's.